every time they lock you inside, still just treating you like a criminal. People that put me into this situation are supposed to be punished, it's not me. One of the women I know from the streets is Anna. Two years ago, Anna was trafficked from her village in Nigeria to Denmark by trusted next door neighbors. When she finally arrived in Copenhagen, she was placed in a flat with five other Nigerian women under the control of a madam. Her travel documents were confiscated and the madam told her that she owed 60,000 euro and demanded that she immediately started to repay this fictive debt by working on the streets of Copenhagen as a prostitute. This madam kept her under strict control both day and night. Tell me a little bit about what the life is like on the streets here in Denmark. When you stand there and then you're just looking around like a thief, at the same time you are looking around to look for customer, at the same time you are looking around for the police you not know, to catch you, and at the same time you are looking around for the bad guys you not know, to choke you with knife or something like that when they are drunk. Mm. The very first night that you arrived in Copenhagen, what happened that night? Could you share with me what happened that night? It was very painful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I can see you. Yeah. It was very painful. At that time, you really don't have a choice anymore. Nobody to talk to. If you cannot beat them, then you have to join them. When I go to the client, maybe uh, they just drive a car and then uh, I go inside the car, we'll drive to a place where it's very dark and there's no light. I, I think if anything happened there, I could not call the police. It's just like I'm alone with the client. He could do anything to me. I was very, very scared because I've never experienced that kind of life before. It's other places because uh, when uh, uh, we stand and when we go to Clan, they say a room you can go into very small room and very, very dirty where you could pay 60 krona and then get a key and go inside and you'll be locked up there with uh, the client. It's very dirty and smelling place. It's not so heavy for anybody to go in there. Why was it not possible that you ran away? I can't. The first time when I tried to run away, they have these uh, Russian boys who is working for them. And then they almost killed me, they beat me up. I, I spent uh, two weeks at home. But still, I still have that pain. They have to send me to work so I can make money. One time when I was in the street and then uh, there's one man who came and then I, I asked him if he want me to, to go with him and then he said yes and then I go with him to his place. <laughs> when I get there it was ahead of them. 
It was eight of the men and the eight of them they they all go around and sleep with me. I can call that rape. <laughs> But I could not do anything. I was so scared to go to the police because if I go to them, they will send me back to Africa. All I just ask of is help, not for holding me and for the girls in the street. Because I think this is too much. They took advantage of all the poor people. And then you live in this pain all your life. It's so painful. And if you'd gone back to Africa, would that not have been better for you? No, they will kill me. They will kill me. Because they still need the money. What we've seen, particularly in, in Copenhagen, is that between the end of 2003 and the start of 2004, there has been a virtual explosion of the amount of Nigerian women and girls that, that we meet in our work as social workers. And we meet the women and girls on the street, but we also meet them in brothel prostitution. We know that they are also in, in, used in escort prostitution uh, and in the strip bars. Uh, we've also had referrals from all parts of Denmark. I think you can buy a Nigerian woman uh, in, in every part of Denmark. Hi. Hi. Good night. Thank you. Hi. You, are you from a hot country? Yeah. From Africa? Yeah. yeah. So you want to have fun with us? Yeah. How many are you here tonight? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. The health situation among the Nigerian women is, is often poor. They have not had access, possibly, to medical services. And many of them uh, get pregnant, which is very sad. Uh, fortunately, we can provide them with safe and legal abortions. If they are not given that, they medicate with the illegal drugs to have a, an illegal abortion. And we have met women who have asked, can we please stay with you? If we don't, they are going to send us on the street the same night. We've met women who've had an abortion who have the same evening they are on the street. So they are, are treated uh, in a terrible way and, and forced to endure all of these humiliations and abuses. Like Anna, many of the women I meet on the streets suffer from a wide range of somatic and psychosomatic problems. My first step is to take them to hospitals where tests are also taken for sexually transmitted diseases. However, many of the symptoms are caused by trauma and exacerbated by constant stress. Often, they just need to talk to me and share their hopes, dreams and deepest fears. They tell me I can run, but I can't hide. Anna told me once that she would rather eat sand in the desert than stand here on the ice-cold streets of...